Wow, that was the Flying Scotsman. Welcome to Patrick Hill Station. The story and updates on my model railway continue with this blue Pullman set. The first thing I noticed about it was the trailing bogey here on the dummy uh, kept coming off the track. And when I checked, of course, it had plastic wheels. So I replaced those uh, those two axles with the Hornby metal sets and it's made a tremendous difference. Now the other thing is I did a, a light service on the motor here so let's just have a look. So I cleaned the brushes and oiled all the parts and I used uh, the electric uh, cleaner on everything in there. I, I cleaned the wheels and just made sure there was no gunk in there. I oiled the bearings and and I think everything is ready to go so let's just see how it runs. So I've left the body off so that you can see it. There's no sparking there. It's running very smoothly and much quieter than it did before. And that was just with a nice clean, make sure all the gunk is out of there and it's operating fine and I'm very happy with that outcome. So with a little bit of TLC, you can see how well it runs. I need a buffer for the front there, but that should be an easy replacement. So it doesn't take a lot of technical ability or effort to do a maintenance on your locomotives and check those wheel sets because these older Triang Hornby sets and locos and wagons and coaches are notorious for having plastic wheels that always go out of alignment and are missing bits off the wheels. Now here's the other one that I'm working on, so I'll have two of them going 
uh, within the next day or two. So I hope you enjoyed that. And let's see what's next. Now the problem I had uh, with this one was I couldn't get that screw out the body. It seemed to be locked in. And in closer inspection, if you can just see here, if I can get it to focus. That's a little insert that was in the roof of the body. Difficult to see because it's not focusing that well. Anyway, so that came away when I had to force the screw out and I'll need to get it off of there and get it back into the body. Uh, but once again, uh, this one will get the same treatment. I'll remove it, the motor from the body uh, from that screw there. And I'll give everything a clean, clean the wheels. I'll check these uh, wheel sets here at the back and replace if necessary. So if you have trouble getting that screw out of the body of your blue pullman, that would be the reason. And I just noticed on this one uh, that has a copper washer and that one over there doesn't. I'll need to check the, uh, uh, the servicing sheet to see if it's uh, original equipment. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blast it with the electrical contact cleaner. And I'll let that evaporate and then I'll start cleaning it up. So make sure you get oil into these pads, but don't put too much in. Just enough that it's uh, not overly saturated. And you can put a little bit in here and on the other one, on that worm gear. And see if you can get some on the bearing at the back. And that's good for a start. I know it's a pain to get in and take those brushes off and then get them back in again. But if you can just lever the brushes up and uh, get that in underneath the, sh the uh, brush and on the commutator, uh, you should be able to get it clean. A little dab of oil on the axles in there. Would be helpful. This is where I need three pair of hands. A little bit onto the, the cog. Now, best practice is to leave that for a few minutes and let clean up the excess oil in there, and then let the rest uh, sink in before uh, you turn it over and put it on the track. And while it's down here, you can clean up the wheels and the inside of the flanges too. Now we're just going to give this uh, a test run. 
And there you go. After a, a clean and service, it runs very smoothly. Through the points, no problem. bit noisy through the ballast but that may be just because of the, the flanges but that is excellent very pleased with that and what I'm going to do is just drop a little bit of uh, oil in there and I'll do the same uh, with the screw um, this here when I put it back on I'm just going to put a little dab of oil in here to help it pivot so there's the second one although it's only the uh, the front and rear end, uh, the coaches are somewhere else, can't get my finger on them right now, but uh, the two of them are running quite well, and as I said, when it goes through the ballast, it does make a bit more noise. Now that could be because these wheels are just a little bit on the large side, and if you remember John's Amazing Trains did that whole exercise on machining or turning these wheels down and did it for a price. You know, it's unfortunate we can't get hold of John and maybe get access to the wheels that he had for sale. But it's running quite well, not making a lot of noise. Uh, maybe just needs uh, a good run in because it's it's been in the draw for a while. There you go, your Triang Hornby Midland Pullman sets. You may have noticed here that the undercarriage on this one is silver as it is in here, in this case, it's silver. And as you move along, on the dummy car, on this one, the undercarriage is black. So that means this dummy car and that dummy car have to be swapped around. Now, there's some significance to that. That would tell us, uh, without looking it up, uh, up some records, which year both of these were issued. Because obviously, uh, one was issued with uh, the black undercarriage and the other set was issued with the silver. Just an interesting little fact when you look closer at these. So this is a better view of the two sets. This one with the black undercarriage and that one with the silver. That one there 
is obviously from this set. So somewhere I've got another carriage and that would uh, make the two sets up in the original uh, livery and finish when they were first issued. And here is the grey and blue, the reversed livery um, with the white uh, British Rail uh, logo uh, Pullman. <laughs> Now this has been in a box for a while uh, and I I have the trip the dummy trailer also in a box. I'm not sure if I have uh, a coach but let's see if this will perform. Well surprisingly I must have serviced it before I put it away in the box and it's been there for some time. And I just stumbled a little bit going through that point. But in general, it's uh, running terrifically well. So that is uh, three versions of the Pullman that I have now. There you can see clearly uh, the three different sets. So let's have a look inside Pat Hammond's Trying Hornby, The Story of Rovex, Volume 2, 1965 to 1971. And here on page 137, uh, we can see the DMU Pullman R555, DMU Pullman and R556, the blue and white version, 1963 to 67, and the R555 DMU Pullman and R556 with the yellow front, blue and white, was issued in 1968. And the R555C BR Pullman DMU Pullman two car unit in grey and white was issued between 69 and 72. And interestingly, they only have photographs here of the grey and blue Pullman. That's the R555C. Now, it says here, uh, the late version uh, was to appear in a fourth and final livery in the 1970s when it was released as blue and pale grey with crest heat printed in white on the sides of the units. This fell within the Hornby Railways era and will be covered in volume three. Now, let's just go back a page here. <clears throat> so the blue and white Pullman with yellow front, which is the R555 and R556. Um, in 1968, in line with a British Rail practice, the beauty of the cab front uh, was spoilt by painting it yellow. <laughs> and there it goes on to tell you how many were made at that time.
and the only variation to this livery I have seen had the roof sprayed grey instead of silver. In 69, Rovex followed BR practice and turned out the model in pale grey livery with a blue window strip and dark grey roof. The chassis was all over black and from 1969 the power car and dummy were sold together as a single unit. The model remained in this colour scheme until 1972. <clears throat> the last batch being made in 1971 and being sold as a train pack. The power and dummy cars continued to carry the same numbers as the previous blue and white versions. About 7,800 solo sets were sold and the R552 set of 1969 and the RS652 set of 1970 accounted for a further 17,600. The unit was priced at four pounds, nine shillings and six pence when it first appeared in this livery. That is unbelievable. So this book is just a treasure trove of information. If you want to do some research on your own collection, Oh, and here is the uh, the blue Pullman coaches uh, with the parlour car, the R426. And let me just get to the right one here. The blue and white R426. This coach dates from 1963 and forms part of a very popular Blue Pull Pullman DMU train. It carried the stock number W60745 or W60747 and remained in the catalogue until replaced by the grey version in 1969. The original trains ran in Nanking blue and the electric blue plastic used for the model did not seem too far out. The roof was silver and the window panel white. Between 1965 and 1968, about 24,000 solo models were made. Uh, to these should be added 67,000, which were sold in the R552 set, despite the fact that so many were made compared with each of the blue coaches listed above. The Pullman entire cars sell at a much higher price than the others. They are much overvalued. Hmm. And the grey and blue R426 in 1969, the grey Pullman DMU with a real blue window panel replaced the blue and white version. Okay, so I'll have to look at volume three. But as you see, there's uh, there is so much information here. I've got a set of these and those. I'm actually think of selling these and those if anyone's interested. Some of my favourite uh, wagons, the whiskey wagons, I've got uh, quite a number of these.
And there's the uh, Tartanaro Express Parcel Service. Uh, I gave that one to Alan in the Loft. I hope you're enjoying it and I'm glad to see you run it every now and again. And as you probably know, I have uh, a few of these car carriers. Let me just go back a bit and... Uh, at some of the locals yeah I've got uh, the E3001 with the single pantograph and I have one of these with a single pantograph also I had one of these, but I sold it. Um, and that's regrettable because Double O Bill uh, did a service and repair on one of these and they removed the magnets, which uh, were creating a problem for me uh, when the local tried to negotiate through some points. Just never worked well. Um, and I sold it too early because when I saw Bill's uh, repair and service, I thought, oh, geez, wish I'd have held on to that. Yeah, I've got one of these too. And there's the blue Pullman set. And they were, you know, these were issued in various sets, as you probably know. And there. R55 or RS52, the Blue Pullman cars. A clip and uncoupling ramp. So I'll have to look at volume one to get some further information. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, that service uh, maintenance uh, video that I've just finished on uh, the Blue Pullmans. Uh, quite an easy exercise to go through. And, you know, if you're not 100% confident in your abilities, you don't need to take the whole thing motor apart you just remove it uh, from the local and uh, and use uh, cotton swabs and electrical cleaner and a dab of oil in the appropriate places and it'll make a big difference you know like clean up the brushes and clean the wheels and uh, you know you'll you'll see that um, things will be vastly improved now the one thing is I'm missing uh, some buffers uh, for the blue pullman and I don't have spare ones 
and I think if I try and get them from some of the shops in the UK it'd be pretty expensive so if anybody out there has a, a couple of spare and I probably need two or three um, I would greatly appreciate it if you could maybe stick them in an envelope and send them to me and I'll be happy uh, to forward you uh, some money for that um, and that will help me uh, improve these now moving forward uh, you might notice this here I'll just bring the camera over a bit now it's a C-clamp on a little vice and uh, the reason I have it is the problem that I've been experiencing with uh, swapping out uh, these brass cogs it is very difficult to get them back on again. I've tried different methods. Uh, I've heated up the cog thinking I'll get it expand a bit and get it on but that just proved difficult and the interesting thing is I haven't seen anybody else uh, attempt it you know everybody's kind of skirted around this problem and even Barry Davies wherever Barry is now um, you know he did talk about replacing these and and you know he talked about the 10 tooth and the 11 tooth get them on the right locos and you know he even offered to, to send me some if I needed them uh, and Andy Russell Andy made a great attempt to uh, you know having a go at the at the ring fuel motors uh, how to fix them and broach the topic of removing and replacing a worn out well let's say a worn out or broken plastic uh, cog and then replacing it with a brass one but he never showed how it would be done and I'm not really sure if he if he actually followed through I know that he suggested to me um, to use this but he never demonstrated how he used it now I'm not doubting Andy um, most likely he he did succeed in in the venture but I never really saw it being done so I, I think what I'll do is I'll make an effort to use this and the whole idea is to take out the ring fuel motor remove the gearing place it in in the vice so that the pin on this side is supported and gives some resistance to the pressure that will be applied to the cog on the other side and in order to do that you know, I, I need to get something uh, that would fit over the cog and allow me to get the pressure onto it. I'll need, I'll need to uh, think about that. But, you know, I have four or five ring field motors that need this type of work done. So I, I think I'll be focusing on that. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed my little story on the various Pullman sets. And uh, I haven't been able to put my finger on those other two volumes uh, of the Tryon Railways story. But it's nice to see that with a little bit of effort you can get 
old locos like this running and running smoothly. Pity that we don't have uh, John's amazing trains around. I'm still trying to find out where he is. He could be in Australia with his friend Mervyn. Um, because John had all the knowledge when it came to uh, the hobby. So, um, thanks very much for joining in. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please remember to give me the big thumbs up and share it to those that you might think it would be of interest. And we'll see you next time here at Party Hill Station. Bye for now.